Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today the webinar. My name is Konstantinos Lemonis. I'm a tech lead here at BIT, and I've been using and working with micro frontends for the last five years. And I would like to share with you how you can actually migrate from your monolithic application to micro frontends really easily with BIT today. To start with, we're basically going to start our, our webinar with this specific use case. So as you can see, here we have the Vido Plus. Vido Plus is basically a streaming service. Any resemblances to a real in existing service is totally coincidental. So basically, this Vito Plus service is having the header, as you can see at the top, with a sign-in button where you can actually sign in the service. There is a banner section with a slider where you can actually iterate through different sliders and watch what content is available in more immersive way through this banner. And here at the bottom of it, you can actually see the rails where you can actually navigate through different content that is available in our service. You can even navigate inside that, watch a preview of the show that you might be interested in to some details about each episode. You can also navigate through these episodes and some more data, some more rails here and details about the show. And here at the bottom, you can also see more banners and finally a footer at the very bottom. The thing is that our business is going to be focusing into engaging more and more users. So this is going to be the top initiative of the business for the next few months. And this is going to be the use case that we're going to be looking into. They have basically started creating teams, business teams, product teams that are going to be only be focusing on this specific part. They came up with some ideas that are going to be about how we can actually make the banner section more, more engaging to the users. They're going to add some previews of some shows, some movies. They're going to add some titles on top of these, but they're not entirely sure how these new features should be implemented down to the engineering team, how engineering teams should work them. Because at the moment, engineering team is basically working as a whole together. They have a single monolithic application. So they have features and requests coming from all over the place. So they don't know exactly how to prioritize that inside the engineering team. So they might be thinking about migrating to micro frontends, but they don't know exactly how to do that. On the code side, the current monolith is basically a create React app, as you can see, is a simple structure where inside the source folder, you can actually find the app.js, which is rendering all the routes and the navigation bar. Inside the page, you can find the home component. And this home component is basically rendering the banner, the home content, and the footer. And this banner component is basically the one that we would like to migrate to a micro frontend. So we're going to do that with Bit. We're going to create a micro frontend application. And we're first going to see how we're going to create a micro frontend application and consuming as a dependency in the build time. And then later on, we're going to see afterwards how we can actually consume it in the runtime. The thing is that inside BID, applications have a duality. They're both BID components and also applications. And we're going to see how this exactly works in a while. So we're going to create this new micro frontend with BID CLI, but first we will need to initialize a BID workspace inside our monolith application. So what this created is this workspace JSONC file, where we're going to define the name of my, our workspace, which is webinar monolith. And I'm going to also define the default scope, which is the organization name that I'm going to be using, which is the starting thing was bit at the moment, and webinar MFE, which is my scope. I'm going to be using this scope for now, and I'm going to create a new React application for the banner, which is going to be looking like this. So this is going to be introduce a new folder structure inside our code base, our monolithic application, 
which is the webinar MFC folder. And inside that, we have the new microphone data that we just created. This exposes a banner component. And inside that, we have a TSX file that includes the banner. So now we can actually go to the components and take this banner component from the monovisc application and move it to our microphones application. I have also prepared here some type definitions that you can actually use in order to make the more statically type checking inside this component. We've been using Java for so long, but we haven't had the opportunity to move to TypeScript. So this is also a good opportunity to use some more strict types in terms of that. And as you can see here, we're able to define the banner props that is taking a cards property. And also here, we're gonna define the types for the state of the slider, which is gonna be either slider type or undefined. Now we have this new component that we just created. And I'm going to show you some details about this banner. This banner component actually relies on Chakra UI for building the UI components, React icons, and also React Slick for our slider. As you can see, Bit is able to uh, understand these dependencies by itself without adding any extra dependencies because we're actually importing here these dependencies inside the component. And I'm going to set some more deck, some more dependencies, just because these are peer dependencies of the Chakra UI and are going to be needed in order to be able to develop this banner independently, which is our target here. So now I can actually start my development server, or actually before I actually do that, we need to update the composition. Composition is basically a way to create different variations of this component. So we can actually view this component. And uh, here I'm going to import React and also the Chakra provider that we're going to use in order to provide some Chakra context inside this banner. And finally, I'm going to also need to create a new file for some pictures that I will need to import and injecting this component. And I'm going to take here we have some pictures, which is a list of cards, which is nothing more than a list of images that we can actually inject to the banner and display into the slider. So here we can copy and paste them inside the cards TS file. And finally, I can import them inside here like that and pass them down to the banner, like what we're doing in our monolithic application. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the upload. We're going to come back to this one in a while to explain exactly what it does. But basically, it's mounting a real component to the root of your HTML. This one, OK, and this would be fine. So now I'm able to start our component server. Basically, the component server in Bit is a development server where you can actually find out all the different components in your existing workspace. And you can actually use this in order to be able to develop different components. Like for example, here, the banner that we're going to see, we're going to use it in order to add new features and develop in the meantime. So here we just launched our component server and inside the banner, we're able to see a preview, an overview of this banner with some details, some documentation about this banner component. And here in the preview, you can actually see the different compositions of it. You can navigate through different slides, like what you would do inside the monolithic application. But the important thing is that it's separated from the rest of the app in a way that we're able to develop it separately. Now, since we're actually able to do this, we're able to also use the package name that we can see over here and start consuming that inside the monolithic application. And inside the page here, as you can see, we are importing the banner from the relative path, but I'm going to change that and just import the banner instead of there, but from the 
packets we just created, which is the a micro front end application, which is the banner, the component that we're exposing from the micro front end application. I'm going to start with the monolithic application once again, and we will notice that the application is running just like before. We just changed the source of this banner. We're still able to interact with it inside our monolithic application, but, but we actually have a separated an independent micro front end app, which is exposing this component, which also is able to let us have a separated and independent team focusing on to this specific component. As I mentioned before, bit applications have a duality. So you can actually consume them in the big time, like, like now, and you can also run the applications as you would do with an actual application. So you can start using these apps like this inside Bit Workspace, and then you can run the banner microphone like this in a way that when I run this on the local host 3000, I'm able to run isolated the banner in the slider with the, the different images of the banner. And now, what we have finally achieved is basically extract the existing banner, isolate it, make a team responsible for that, and be able to focus on to this business initiative. And now, what I'm able to do is I can add a new version for this bit component, for this bit micro front end, and create our first Microsoft application, and this will let us create the very first version of this component 001. Then we're able to export it and, and get it to BitCloud. And here in BitCloud, we are able to find out this banner inside our school that we just released. This preview is basically going to be the same as our component server, but it is hosted on the BitCloud and we're able to see the documentation about this component and also the preview of the component and be able to share it with other stakeholders inside our company. So for example, here we can add more documentation. We can show the details, how you can actually run this component outside of this workspace. We have the compositions here listed, the properties that this, how you can actually use and consume this component, the properties that it's getting, and also the preview with all the different compositions, being able to navigate through the banners and everything like that. But we don't need to stop here. Basically, another thing that we can do is instead of consuming this banner component in the, in the build time, we can also do that in the runtime. And the way that we can do that, I have prepared here an example for you. And here, this is how we define the applications inside Bit. This is the React app type, the SJS file, where we can actually define and also configure the application. And here we have added a new step compared to before. This is the only thing that we have added, is a deploy step in order to be able to deploy this application to Netlify with some configuration data and also some configuration about the module federation because we're going to be consuming this banner component in the runtime through module federation. And we're exposing this banner component like what we would do in any web configuration. That actually let us run the application on Netlify. So when I bit tag a new version of this component. This will actually run a few different tasks, including the deployment step of Netlify. And here you can actually see what the application looks like on Netlify. So basically we're able to independently run the application like what we would do when we would run bit run banner in our local workspace. On top of that, we are now exposing this remote entry which is the entry of our modules of the, the module federation. And we can define here, we can, we can mention, we can reference here 
the bundle component that we're exposing through this remote entry. In that way, uh, we are able to start consuming that inside the monolithic application. So the only thing that we're changing here in the Create React app, we are adding some modules federation configuration in a way that the entry point, we are defining the remote entry, which is going to be the Netlify application. And finally, in our own page, instead of actually importing the banner component from the packets, just like what we did before, we're now lazy loading the component from the remote entry, which is Netlify, and importing this component asynchronously through the wire. So now we're able to reference the remote banner and use the React Suspense in order to asynchronously load this component and pass down the cards like what we would do with the normal build time banner component. And if I go here now and run the application again, we will see that the application is running as expected with a banner here, we're able to navigate again. The only difference is that we are requesting this banner from the remote entry, which is the URL that we just seen before on Netlify. And here we are able to reference the banner component through this remote entry. If I want to take it a step further, we're also, we're also able to check this component here in the React developer tools and even suspends this component, or maybe the, not exactly this one, possibly this one. Uh, so you're going to see what is the fallback until this banner becomes available in your, in your, in your screen. So we're able, for example, to sub here a fallback in case something goes wrong in the, in the network request. And this helps a lot because we give the flexibility to the team that's responsible for this banner to asynchronously release to production any new version of this banner without the need to build the new version of the monolithic application and then deploy it to production. What we did until here uh, is basically we configured the application, the bit application, to use module federation and deploy to Netlify as a steps in order to be able to release this banner microphone to a remote. And then we configured the Create React app in a way to consume this remote entry through module federation inside the Create React app uh, context. Finally, we were able to use React Suspense and lazy loading in order to consume this banner component inside our application and render the banners as we did before. This is very, very much powerful. And this is because we were able to create independent teams really easily in an agile way and flexible teams that are in less than 30 minutes, we were able to extract this banner to a specific microphone and using BIT. As an engineering team, we were able to help business focus on specific initiatives and help them deliver them in a faster way in a way that it actually helps them meet their goals. And the engineering teams are also working autonomously. They're able to autonomously release their changes to production without depending on the monolith application during this process. This is, helps a lot to the business to be agile, to change priorities according to different, in order to meet their goals. And the thing is that we were able to extract this banner component, but that never stops us from doing this for basically for even more components. So we can actually either introduce new, 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 new features, or we can actually start moving other parts. For example, we might need a team that might be responsible just for the header and the footer. And we're going to create a new MFE for that, or we're going to be creating a team that is going to be only be responsible for the rails, because in rails, we're actually displaying so much, so much data. And we also plan to personalize the experience of these rails. And we're also going to start using these, these application, these microphone applications inside the bit context and start 
implementing autonomously and running these applications separately. So for example, I may to introduce a new footer and uh, micro frontend and a new Rails micro frontend. And as you can see here, we're able to introduce many, many more and even run them autonomously in, in local system. I think that is all for now. Thank you very much for joining and have a great day.